Here we have a band ski fob that came in for repair and this one was shipped over to us from Florida by Randall. And do we know the year and model of the vehicle? We do not. Let's read what the customer wrote. The customer mailed over two boards, this one and this one. If you flip the boards, this one is labeled original and this one is labeled donor. So the customer mailed this over so we can use it for parts to fix this one. Let's read what the customer wrote. I have a fob that has the IR emitter broken off. I have a donor fob with the same emitter in place. You will need to use low melt solder technique for this. <laughs> so we know the customer has been watching. He's recommending that we use low melt solder and low melt solder is magic, but I do not think that we can use low melt solder for this one. Let me show you what I mean. It's nice when customers know what's going on and they watch the videos and they learn. If we look at the IR emitter, we can tell that it's broken off. I do not know if those pads are broken off. We're going to have to find out. But the emitter is broken off and while at it, why not inspect the rest of the board to make sure everything is good? I put an O for original, so we do not confuse it with donor. And the fob looks absolutely mint, clean, except for that IR emitter. And if we flip the board and remove the sticker, there are no components on the back, but we can check for the traces. Check for corrosion and broken lines. And the fob looks clean very clean so the only thing that we need to do is replace the IR emitter and the reason we will not be able to use low melt solder is because let's take a look at the donor board it's very hard to fit the soldering iron here and apply low melt solder very very difficult I'm using a very fine tweezer and I can barely fit the tweezer in here and if we look at the NF dot mini soldering pen Look at the tip. You cannot fit the tip in there to apply low melt solder. So that's the reason why we cannot apply low melt solder for this job. What we're going to do is apply hot air from the bottom. The bottom is empty. We do not have to worry about damaging any components on the bottom. So we apply heat here. Solder will liquefy on the top. And then we can safely remove this IR emitter. But before we do so, we have to prep the pads here. What I'm going to do is... We're going to use this universal board holder. I'm going to place the original fob on the left, like this. And we're going to place the donor on the right. Just like that. We can work on two boards at once. I can even put a third board in the middle here. If you have not already bought the board, you can log in to northwishfix.com, click on shop. You can add whatever you want to the shopping cart and we almost always ship out same day. You can buy everything from board holders, soldering station, hot air station, thermal cameras, grinding pan, power supplies, needle probes, multimeter probes, multimeter, everything. Everything that we use on the bench here, we carry and sell in our store and we have everything in stock. I mentioned this in every video for all new viewers. Oh, I did have the job and the microscope is not showing. Great. So what I did is I prepped the pads here. Prep this one, this one, this one, this one. And I thought the two bottom pads were ripped off the board, but they are not. I do not even know if those pads are used. I changed that type of emitter before, and I cannot recall if the front two pads are used or not. Let's go over here. For this one, I'm going to have to put the fob on the edge of the board holder so we can heat up from the bottom and safely remove this emitter. So I have the donor fob like this. It's extending beyond the board holder and we're going to apply 
hot air from the bottom to safely remove the emitter from the top. Otherwise, we're going to burn it with hot air. Right now, the microscope is going to extend all the way beyond my bench. So that's the hot air nozzle on the bottom. We're going to point hot air bottom of the board. And then we should be able to safely remove this component. And out. And as we can see, the front two pads are not being used. So we're going to remove solder of those two pads on the original top. We're going to apply solder mask so we can cover them. They're not being used. And we're going to use the pads that we see here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's what we're going to do. Let's remove this donor fob from here. And I'm going to place the original fob on the edge so we can heat from the bottom and solder this component. Right now, since the front pads are not being used, I'm going to remove solder because solder may interfere with the height of that component. And we do not want that to happen. So we're going to wake up the solder. And just like that. We're good. And if you notice, I twirl the swab in a clockwise motion so I can get stuff away from the switch. Now, if I want to cover those pads, easy. Just apply solder mask. We can do it in two seconds. And we can save the world from complaints. Take some from here and apply here. And again, with the swab, we can do this. And take some from here and apply here. That's all we need to do. We do not even need to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. We only have a tiny bit of solder mask, so it does not take a lot of UV light to cure that mask, just like that. And now the real deal. We need to apply flux and we need to solder that connector. So you see why we do not apply low mount solder? Maybe we should call this video when not to apply low mount solder. Not enough room. I'm applying heat from the bottom. And we're going to wait until this component settles down in place. Just like that. The component is soldered on perfectly. That's been enough a bit. On the sides. while that board is still hot, so alcohol can evaporate quicker. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and check the fob one more time, make sure everything is good. So everything on the board looks very good. No issues, no problems. And back of the board where we applied heat, beautiful. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.